of course, after a four-year wait, finally KPA have won the Kenya Basketball Federation Women's Premier League. But still on basketball and still on the play of Strathmore University Blades, cut short KPA men's team celebrations when they aged them out to a 65-64 force to force game four on Sunday at Makande. The game will be played this afternoon at 4 p.m. So those are the highlights from yesterday's match where Strathmore got a 64, 65 rather 64 win against defending champions KPA. The two teams will lock horns this afternoon at 4 p.m. for game four of the final series. So the two, the two teams are expected to lock horns this afternoon at the Makande Gymnasium. So let's take a look at the KBF final series, how it has been for both men and women, how they've played. And uh, remember, KPA have won the final series, uh, beating Equity, who are the 2016 champions. And uh, if we take a look at the final series, uh, how the two teams have played before KPA rather emerged the winner in the final in the game three that was played yesterday at uh, Makande Gymnasium in uh, Mombasa. And also remember the other teams that are locking horns. Now in the men's uh, final that is going to be played this afternoon, KPA leading the series 2-1. Remember in Nairobi, they won two games that were played at the Nazarene University. But yesterday, Strathmore managed to pull one back for themselves and bring themselves back into the contention of winning this uh, 20, the 2017 championship, uh, winning yesterday's match 65-64. The two teams will lock on later or lock horns rather later on today at 4 p.m. in Makandi Gymnasium in Mombasa. Now, we'll take a look at the women's uh, championship and KPA had a clean 3 nil sweep against Equity. Remember the two games that were played last weekend here in Nairobi. KPA won all that and then the, yesterday they beat, managed still to beat Equity and take a, a clean sweep 3 nil to win the national championships after four years of waiting so congratulations to kpa for winning that and we'll be waiting to see uh, who comes out the winner in this afternoon's clash between kpa and strathmore in their uh, men's final match so now let's move away from uh, basketball and get into rugby champions kcb made it 10 wins from 10 with a 41 12 whitewash of Cab over cabra sugar at the kcb sports club in ruaraka on saturday peter carrier Darwin Mukiza and Nick Ongeti all touched down for KCB while Philip Wakoraj crossed over for Cabras. The results saw KCB secure Kenya Cup home semi final qualification with a game to spare. In other matches, Impala Saracens climbed to third place on Kenya Cup standings with a 23 10 beating of Strathmore Lewis, while Nakuru RFC outclassed, outclassed Nondis to a 24 11 win. <laughs> Okay, so you're not able to, to get in at all now. So that was the most anticipated clash of the Kenya Cup so far. KCB taking on Cabras and KCB got that 41-12 win over Cabras yesterday at the day. Now, KCB is still unbeaten after 10 matches so far in the season. Let's, but let's take a look at other results from yesterday's matches. Harley Queens got a 43-17 win over Kisi RFC. Then we have Mwamba getting a 34-20 win over Black Blood. And other fixtures from yesterday, we have... Uh, KCB, of course, getting a 41-12 win over 
uh, Cabras. Impala Saracen got 23-10 win over Strathmore Leos. Nakuru RFC got a 24-11 win over Nondis, while Homeboys had the biggest win of the day, getting a 121-11 win over Mombasa RFC. So those are the results from the matches that were played yesterday. Remember, yesterday was Kenya Cup game week 10. So we now shift and take a look at the Kenya Cup table. So we take a look at the Kenya Cup table right now. Ten matches so far played in Kenya Cup. And we have uh, the table right here. KCB still unbeaten. The question is who's going to beat KCB this season in Kenya Cup. They have... 49 points from the 10 games played. They've won all the 10 games. And uh, number two is Homeboys. Remember, Homeboys have lost only one game this season, and their only loss was against KCB. They come in at number two with 44 points. The Saris, that is Impala Saracens, are number three after playing 10 games, winning eight and losing two with 39 points. Now, Cabras Sugar, after losing yesterday, they dropped to number four with uh, 38 points from 10 games. They've played, they've won eight and lost two. There are two losses coming uh, at home to homeboys and away to KCB. Number five comes in Queens, Kenya Harley Queens with 33 points, 10 matches played, six won, four lost. And number six is Strathmore Leos, who lost yesterday to Impala Saracens. And they have 25 points from uh, 10 matches, lost five, won five. Number seven is Nakuru RFC, with 22 points, and they've lost six matches so far in the league. Coming in at number eight is Mwamba RFC with 18 points from the 10 matches played. So let's uh, take a look at the four other teams remaining in the Kenya Cup. Nondis come in at number nine with 17 points from the 10 matches played, and they've lost seven and won only three matches this season. Now, Black Blood have 16 points after winning three matches and losing seven. Kisi RFC are number 11 on the log with seven points, with one win to their name and losing nine. Mombasa RFC are bottom placed at number 12 without a, a point in the Kenya Cup this season. So that is how the Kenya Cup looks so far. That's the Kenya Cup table that we have. But now let's move on from uh, the bullying on the Kenya Cup table and move on to swimming. And in the second day of Kenya Swimming Federation age group championship was just but a number, uh, rather age was just a, num a number as competitors in different age groups took one on uh, one another in a bid to conquer the leaderboard. In the same event, Kenya took the opportunity to aid its selection of the team for the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games and also the Kana Zone 4 Championships slated for 21st and to 23rd March in Malawi. We wish them the very best. We hope yeah, they will attain what others have attained before and surpass it. It will come in the morning swim preliminaries and then the top eight will come back in the afternoon. Uh, to swim the finals. Mombasa Aquatics Ivan Hart highlighted the day in the boys' 10 and over 100 meters butterfly category and went ahead to break his own record in the final. I got the national record for that. They also took my speed for 800. I got the national record for that and the 1,500, which was the event. Some 200 meter freestyle and I'm about to swim 100 meter freestyle. Um, I sadly did not improve, but I am trying as hard as I can. So those were the results from yesterday's races that took place at the Kasarani gym, uh, at uh, Kasarani rather. And today the swimming continues at Kasarani. And I'm now joined by Linda Rotuno, who is at the Kas who was at Kasarani. Remember yesterday we had uh, the team selection for the. Team, team Kenya, rather, that will go to Kana for the African Championships. And we're also having a selection for the team that will represent Kenya at the Commonwealth Games slated for April uh, this year. What can you tell us, Rotuno, that, uh, you know, bring, bring us up to speed of what has, the races that have taken uh, part so far? And, uh, you know, who, who are we expecting to see represent Kenya at the Commonwealth Games or at, in Kana in Malawi? the third and final day of the Kenya Swimming Federation National Age Group Championships, which has been running since Friday. And behind me there's uh, some action and this is a warm-up for the finals that are going to take place uh, shortly. And uh, from this we're going to get the team that will represent Kenya in the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games in Australia 
and also that one that will represent Kenya in the Kana uh, Zone 4 Championships. And as per yesterday, uh, in the day two events, there were 10 events that were taking place, and the star player of the day was Ivan Hart from Mombasa Aquatics. And if I can refer from my uh, notes, uh, Ivan Hart uh, set new, a, a new national record, rather, in the 100 meters butterfly uh, in the 10 and 11 uh, boys category, and he set a record of uh, 1 minute 15.26 records, and this shattered uh, Chirag Patel's record of 1 minute 17.79, uh, which was set in 2008. And by yesterday, Ivan had set six records so far, and in the competition and the three-day event here, yeah, there has been uh, seven records which have been broken so far, and we have the first one which was broken in the first day, and that was by Is Islam Ali Lubaina of Mombasa Aquatics, and she swam uh, for 21 minutes, 13.76 seconds, to set a new national record, and this is in the 12 to 13 years uh, girls uh, 1500 meters freestyle category, and she broke Eva Donde's record of 22 minutes, 39.29 seconds, and this was set in 2001, and as you can tell, that is quite amazing and uh, joining me right now is Samuel Ndonga and Samuel uh, is one of the participants who is going to uh, take part in the events that are slated for the afternoon. Um, okay Samuel, so kindly tell us uh, what specific events, what specific events rather are you going to participate in, in the afternoon? Alright, so uh, thank you for having me here. I shall be taking part in the 100 breaststroke and 50 meters breaststroke this afternoon, yes. And what are your expectations for, for the race? So my expectation for this race is, for both races actually, I'm trying to actually gauge where I am because it's pretty early in the season. So more, it's more about to learn where I am at the moment and see how I can adjust my training program so I can prepare for future competitions, yeah. And maybe uh, to take you back, we understand that you rep uh, you're the team captain for the team that represented Kenya in the Kana uh, Championships. Maybe tell us a little bit more about uh, what went down. All right, so we had uh, the championships held last year around November, and we went to Tanzania. It was the Zone 3, quite excellent. Our Kenya team, actually everyone won a medal, which was fantastic. And I was pretty proud of the team. Which was, we did pretty good. New, uh, most people did PBs, personal best times, and I was happy. Yeah. And maybe from what you saw previously, how do you expect the team that is going to be selected to, uh, to play out in the coming event? From what I've seen from then and also now uh, from this competition, I see we'll actually prove to, we'll have very good results because a lot of, we have many upcoming swimmers, which is fantastic. So I actually see that they'll do a good job, yeah, in my opinion, yes. The teams are yet to be selected. Do you think you're going to make the cut for the upcoming tournaments, considering these are prestigious events in the uh, swimming uh, industry? Okay, looking at the competition, it's really tight. Uh, we have a lot of, as, as I said, upcoming swimmers, which is uh, good. Well, in my opinion, I see whether I do or uh, whether I don't make the team, it's all right with me because there's always next year. But I'll keep working hard, do my best. So, yeah, we'll wait and see what happens from now until then. So. Maybe for uh, the final question, how do you think such events uh, play part in building the uh, swimming as a sport in the country, considering there are other sports like athletics, rugby, which are known for taking over the spotlight? Okay, in my opinion, from what I've seen, um, a lot of swimming is actually an upcoming sport. Uh, we used to have guys like Danford in the past, but from recent um, activities, we have more guys going to the Olympics. Most of us are going outside to train. So in the future, you'll see more upcoming swimmers. Hopefully we'll even uh, <laughs> win medals in the Olympics, set world records, you never know. So we are saying we hope for the best. We're training as hard as we can as swimmers and as athletes. So yeah, wishing all of us the best. Yes. Thank you so much, Samuel. Uh, that is just one of the athletes and we wish him the best as he tries to make a cut for the upcoming tournaments. And uh, for my second interview, we are joined by um, Mr. Reginald uh, Okumu and Kindly tell us uh, uh, how are the events going on so far? So far, so good. Uh, it's our third and last day. We we are grateful for the for the turnout, the level of competition, the organization. Uh, it's all upbeat. We are looking forward to a to a much closer and a much uh, uh, more pronounced finish. So we we are looking forward to the end and uh, hope uh, the, all the all the swimmers who've done their best will make the list to to Commonwealth and to Kana.
and we understand uh, that as a member of the, uh, as an official rather of the Kenya Swimming Federation you've not yet done uh, the team selection for the Gold Coast and the Canas on four championships uh, what is the criteria that you're going to use uh, to determine who's going to take part in this uh, event uh, for for Gold Coast uh, the criteria is uh, we'll use FINA points um, we we basically have a number a number of, of, of uh, criteria that we, we will rely on one is the most important fact in swimming is time. So your time will determine whether you, you make the team or not. Um, so we are, we, are, we are going to look at the swimmers who have the best times. But we also need to consider that uh, for, for Commonwealth, we are limited to only sending five swimmers, uh, two, two male and two female. So we don't have the luxury of, of, of having a very expanded uh, criteria that would favor uh, a number of swimmers. So we are limited and we have to select the best. So we need to come up with a formula that can, can, can allow us to compare, say, a backstroker and a breaststroker and a, and a butterfly, uh, someone who's doing IM, those who are doing short distance, long distances. And the best system that we've come up with is a FINA points. So FINA points enable you to, to rank swimmers based on their, uh, on their points on a, on a world scale. So in this case, we're going to use FINA points to determine who among us the two boys will select and who among us the three girls will select for, to represent Kenya. And uh, what are your expectations for Team Kenya uh, considering their performance in previous events? Uh, we, we expect them to do their best. Um, the, the ones we select will be the best for the country, so uh, we also expect they'll put up their best. Uh, it's, a, it's a tough world. We have lost quite a lot as a, as, a, as a country in terms of swimming development, but we are getting there. We, hopefully we can learn from the experiences they will have, whatever they, they, they'll get or how far they'll go in these competitions. Uh, and we pick up from there. Hopefully, by the time we get to 2020, in Tokyo, we'll have a much better team and the events that uh, will come after that. Thank you so much. Um, that is Mr. Reginald Okumu, and he's a member of the Inter-Management Board of the Kenya uh, Swimming Federation. And as he said, Kenya has just five slots uh, of representation to the Commonwealth Games, and that is three women and two, women, and two men. And uh, by the end of this day, the Kenya uh, Swimming Federation uh, Management Interim Board are going to sit down and come up with a selection of who and who are going to represent the country in, in the upcoming tournaments. Uh, back to you, Robinson. Well, thanks a lot, Rotuno. Linda Rotuno right there at Kasarani following up on the two events that are taking place right there. That is the Commonwealth uh, selection for Team Kenya and also selection of the team that will represent Kenya at uh, Kana in Malawi for Zone 4. Thanks a lot, Rotuno. We'll be keeping tabs uh, with you on what is going right there and the team that has been selected. And uh, I know probably you may want to be swim. You may want to swim. Uh, have fun at Kasarani. We'll be getting back to you later. So now let's move on to football. And uh, we moved to Kenya Premier League, where Wazito FC went down by a solitary goal to host Bandari in what was their first loss in the 2018 KPL Week 4 action. The goal was netted in the dying minutes of the match through Anthony Wambani, despite the visitors enjoying an upper hand for the better part of the match. In a different match, Kakamega homeboys playing for the first time at Bukungu Stadium this season had no Fuller's press to thank after holding off a resilient Vihiga United 2-1 a week uh, rather in week four of the Kenya Premier League. <laughs> Of course, the action coming right there in the match between Bandari and Wazito, where Bandari got a 1-0 win. So let's take a look at other results from yesterday's matches in the Kenya Premier League Week 4 action. The match that we just highlighted between Bandari and Wazito ended 1-0. And then Kakamega homeboys had Noah Fuller to thank for in their 2-1 win over Vihiga United. Nakumat had to settle for... 
barren draw against Sony Sugar in a match that was played here in Nairobi at the Ruaraka Stadium. The other match of the day was between Poster Rangers and Chemilil, where they had to settle for a barren draw. And remember, that match was played at Narok Stadium in away in Narok. So those are the results from yesterday's matches. But uh, away from yesterday, let's now flip over and take a look at the fixtures for this afternoon, the matches that we have this afternoon in the Kenya Premier League. And uh, the match that is currently going on at uh, Kenyatta Stadium in Machakos is between Mavara United and Sofa Paka. And the match that we'll be bringing you live from here, KTN News, from 4 p.m. will be between Kario Bangi Sharks and Gor Maia, still played uh, at uh, Kenyatta Stadium in Machakos. Remember, that match will be coming to you from 4 p.m. this afternoon right here on KTN News. The other match of the day is between FC Leopards and Ulinzi Stars. Tasca FC will be taking on Zoya Sugar, while bottom placed uh, Zoo FC will be lock horns with Fika United. So those are the fixtures for this afternoon in the Kenya Premier League table. So we'll be, we'll be joining Abula Ahmed in a few moments and uh, he'll be bringing us more updates from uh, Kenyatta Stadium in Machakos to let us know what is transpiring over there. Uh, remember the match that is currently going on is between Madhara United and uh, Sofa Paka. So he'll be bringing us more information about uh, the goals, if there are any that have been scored right there at, uh, in uh, Machakos. And also later on, what to expect in the match between Kario Bangi Sharks and Gor Maia. But that will be coming up after this short commercial break.